Welcome to Dr. Piercy's Downloading and Installing Eclipse Neon Edition. This video was made under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial License. In this video, you're going to learn what Eclipse is and what it can be used for. You'll see how to download and install Eclipse. And we'll take a brief look at Eclipse to see that it is working on your computer. So, you may be asking, what is Eclipse? Eclipse is a development environment, a software application with lots of tools that you can use to create stuff. Eclipse is integrated. This means that all tools provided by Eclipse are collected in one software package that works together. You can also think of integrated as meaning that the diverse components that you create are integrated to form a complete package. So, finally, Eclipse is known as an Integrated Development Environment, or IDE. To start, point your browser at www.eclipse.org. And here, we'll see the Eclipse organization's main page. Note the large orange button labeled Download at the top right corner of the Eclipse homepage. We'll click there to start our download of the Eclipse IDE. Now we see the Eclipse download page. You should first notice the Get Eclipse area on this page. Notice there are two places you can click. The obvious one is the bright orange Download button. Just below that though, notice it says Download Packages. We're going to look here first because there's something else we'll need before Eclipse can run well on your machine. This is the Eclipse Download Package page. Note that there are a number of different packages for Eclipse. Each one includes the basic Eclipse IDE, but the different packages will include different tools. You should get the one that matches the types of things that you're going to want to create. For us, that's going to be the Eclipse IDE for Java EE developers. But don't click on that now. First, we need to make sure that we have the right Java JDK. To get the Java JDK, scroll down the page until you see the hint in the right margin of the page. We're going to navigate away from the Eclipse site in order to get the appropriate JDK. To do this, right-click on the link shown here. I'm going to open it in a new tab. Here, we see several options for the JDK. Any of these should work fine. As Java is owned by Oracle, I'm going to the source and get the Oracle JDK. On the Oracle Java download page, I see a couple of options. I'm going to click on the Java button here. Here we see a list of multiple downloads. The trick here is you want to pick the one that matches your machine. I am using a Mac, so of course I'm going to get the one for the Mac OS X. If you're on a Windows machine, you probably want to get the 64-bit version unless your machine is very old. First, click the radio button to accept the license agreement. Then locate the link appropriate for your operating system and click on it. Your download should begin. Once your download is complete, Navigate to the file in your File Explorer. After we find it in the File Explorer, we need to open and run this installer in order to install the JDK. When the installer opens, simply work through each dialog in turn until the installation is complete. Now that we have the appropriate JDK, we can go back and resume our installation of Eclipse. Here we are back on the Eclipse Packages download page. There are a couple ways to download Eclipse. You could download the package that you need. In this instance, we'll need the Eclipse IDE for Java EE developers. Or instead, you can use the nice Eclipse installer. 
number. You see this on my page as the large blue box at the top. For this video, I'm going to use this method. So click on the blue box in order to download the installer. Then, of course, click the download button on the next page. Once the download is complete, we need to run the installer file. So as we did before with the JDK installer, navigate to the file in your file explorer. Then open and run this file. Here we see the Eclipse installer. Note again that there are multiple types of packages that you can get for the Eclipse IDE. For our needs, we're going to select the Eclipse IDE for Java EE developers. Once the Eclipse installation is complete, you have some options. First, let's go ahead and launch Eclipse so that we can see what it looks like. As Eclipse launches, it will notify you of a location on your hard drive that it considers to be the workspace. The workspace is the default location for storing any of your project files that you create in Eclipse. You may browse to change this or you may use the one that's created by Eclipse. I tend to stick with the default workspace for most of my projects. After that, Eclipse will finish loading and you'll be able to start developing your Java EE projects. We'll discuss how to do this in later videos in the series. For now, let's just shut down Eclipse. One last thing that I like to do is I want to make sure that I can easily find and open Eclipse. So I'm going to add it to my software dock at the bottom of the screen. You might want to add it as a shortcut icon on your desktop. For a Mac, I need to find the Eclipse starter file, and then I can simply drag that to my dock. Now that that's done, I'm ready to start building things using the Eclipse IDE. The primary reference for this video and the content found here is the Eclipse Foundation website at eclipse.org. This is your go-to source for all things concerning Eclipse. If you want to know about Eclipse, need some help, or just want to look at the Eclipse documentation, then this is where you should start. You can find information about Java and the JDK at the Oracle Technology Network at the URL shown here. This video was written, narrated, and produced by Dr. Craig A. Piercy under Creative Commons license. The background music is locally sourced by Jason Farnham from the YouTube Audio Collection. This has been a Piercy production.